Hey everyone, Santad here, and if you clicked on this video, it sounds like you want to learn about how to craft in Rune Factory 4, and in particular, how you can do some big damage numbers, uh, like that. 40,000. I think that's big. Um, but yeah, so I absolutely love the crafting system in this game. Uh, it's probably my favorite crafting system of like any game um, so far, uh, because you have so much freedom in how you actually design your weapons and equipment. But because you have so much freedom, it gets really, really complicated to get into at first. Uh, if you search Google, you might find some really, really cool and useful text guides around, like on GameFAQs or on Reddit or on Google Docs or Sheets. But a lot of the really important information is spread out through all of these different guides. So putting them together can be really, really complicated and scary for someone who is new to the game particularly since we'll have the Steam version of the game coming out in a few days. So I thought I'd bring all the information together and put them in one easily digestible, con easily digestible format in a video series. Uh, and yeah, so this will be the first part uh, in what should probably be like a five or six part series. Uh, so this one will probably be the longest and most theoretical of them. Uh, we'll be going through all the mechanics of crafting. So we'll be talking about uh, things you might have heard or read about, like the appearance, the base stats, uh, level and rarity bonuses, and crafting and upgrade effects. We'll go through all of those today. Uh, in the next video, in the next lesson, we'll talk about good upgrade materials, uh, what materials you want to consider when you're upgrading. After that, we'll talk about weapons, uh, including staffs and farm equipment. Following that, we'll talk about accessories and shoes in particular, because they're a bit weird and interesting. And finally, we will talk about overall builds and how you design a good build and what you want to consider. Uh, so just some quick caveats. Uh, number one, uh, this is not the only way to play the game. Uh, crafting isn't everything. You can finish the game without crafting. In fact, I'm doing a video series on that somewhere. I'll link it somewhere. And it's very, very fun, so you don't need to craft. Um, also, optimization doesn't need to be the only way, of course. Like, the story of this game is amazing. But, okay, get into rant. Anyway, uh, number two, this video should not contain any spoilers um, at all. The next videos might contain slight spoilers with regards to uh, equipment names or place locations. Um, but yeah, we'll get that when we get to that. For now, you should be fine. But with that done, let's get going. So, step one, part one, how do you craft? Well, uh, if you haven't started crafting already, uh, you should probably get, through, get a bit further through the game. Basically, first, you need to get a forge or a crafting table from Beta, Bada, however it's pronounced. You just ask him for a forge or a crafting table, and he'll make one for you if you have the right materials. Um, you can also get one from Eliza, um, I think at some point during her quest the line. But if you don't, um, yeah, get them from Bada. <laughs> uh, if you want to get the actual recipes to forge things, you want to go ask Porkline uh, at his restaurant. Ask him for recipe bread, and he can give you weapon bread, accessory bread, or farming bread. Uh, weapon and farming bread help you forge things, and accessories help you forge armors and stuff. Um, the skills you actually, the recipes you actually learn from these breads depend on your skill level, uh, mainly your crafting and your forging levels. But your weapon and farming skills are also relevant for those. Um, for example, if you want to craft a high level longsword, you need some longsword skills. If you want to craft a high level hammer, you need some hammer skills just to learn the recipe. So it's been important to actually try and get those skills up if you want to forge those weapons. Uh, for recipe levels above level 80, um, you'll need to get the accessory bread plus, the weapon bread plus, or the farming bread plus, which you can get from late game dungeons. Um, you'll get to that when you get to that, and you'll know what I mean when you get there. But yeah, that is basically how you can set up forging and actually forge. All you need to do is you need to go to your forge. Um, so I put them all in the courtyard, just so they're easy for the spinner. And then you say to make a weapon. I'm going to say I'm going to make a longsword, um, a claymore, and it'll automatically fill in um, the stuff you need from your inventory or from your storage. So here it's going to make a longsword with a mineral, in this case the silver I have in my inventory. I'm going to press OK, and I'll hammer a bit, and I will guarantee it'll make me a claymore. Um, so, I'm going to go through here and 
it sounds like I'm making things more complicated, but we'll make things more simple later on. Um, so effectively, we fold a recipe with five or fewer materials. Every recipe has five or fewer materials. And it'll give me the appearance and the base fats that follow that recipe. So the recipe said I would have a claymore, and thus I made myself a claymore with the fats of a claymore. It'll make more sense later on. But yeah, so we have a claymore. And now, part two uh, is upgrading. So you can upgrade a weapon or equipment up to nine times until it hits level 10. So I'll show that for you right now. I'm gonna go to my forge, I'm gonna press upgrade, put in my claymore, and I'm gonna put in a material, in this case bronze. <clears throat> and what's gonna happen is that the bronze will give me more stats uh, depending on what the material is. So the bronze here says it'll give me defense plus four. So right now my claymore has attack plus 12 only, but once it upgrades, it'll give me defense plus four along with attack plus four. And its level is now level two. Um, so we can do the same with silver. Um, so we'll get defense plus seven. In addition to our defense plus four, so four plus seven is 11. So our new claymore, once we upgrade it again, we'll have defense plus 11. Now, one important thing is that if you upgrade a weapon or equipment with the same material that you've used before, when you're upgrading, the effects are diminished. So if I use a bronze again, we said that it gives defense plus 4. Right now we have defense plus 11, 4 plus 11 is 15, but overall we only get defense plus 30. So every subsequent item we use has a lower effect, usually it's about half, so half of 4 is 2, 11 plus 2 is 13. Um, I believe that my next bronze should only give me plus 1, so 13 up to 14. Um, and yes, um, so in general you want to use different upgrade materials each time, but we'll go more detail about that in later videos. So here's the diagram again. Basically we have the recipe materials, five or fewer, and you can have upgrade materials that are nine or fewer to give upgrade effects. So, part three, additional components. So let us ignore this claymore for now, and let's make a new weapon. Um, I say let's make a longsword, let's make a... let's make a flying bridge. So we'll make that um, with five different materials in the recipe. And if you look carefully, you might notice that the name of the word flying bridge is in blue. Let me show you that again. So there's the claymore, uh, the name is written in white, and the flying bridge's name is written in blue. And that's very, very important. Um, weapons whose names are blue have extra effects, and we can see them if we talk to Barrett. Um, looks like he's in the lake right now. Um, so if you talk to Barrett and you bring him over, um, if you're friends with him, you can tell him to follow you. So let's do that. Follow me, Barrett. I need your help for a tutorial. Ah, isn't he a teacher? <laughs> he's my teaching assistant. <laughs> um, sorry. Okay. So you can talk to Barrett, and you can ask him to uh, check my gear. Uh, so here's the claymore I held before, and he's going to tell me that the claymore has been strengthened with um, bronze, silver, bronze, and bronze again. So he says what we use in the order we use them. He says it's made with some unusual materials. Um, we'll get to that later on, so keep like a pin in that for now. Uh, but yeah, so he just said our material was upgraded with things. Um, and it was made with unusual materials. Now let's go to our um, Flambridge. And ask him what he thinks about the Flambridge. The blue named Flambridge. Uh, please check my gear. Um, so he says the Flambridge has been strengthened with nothing yet, which makes sense, we haven't upgraded it yet. But it looks like Magic Claw and Thunderbird Feather were using making this. So, uh, this is what happens when you make recipes with more than three materials, so with four or five. Um, recipes that use them have one or two extra effects that are randomly selected from the recipe um, to be used for the final piece. Uh, so, in this case, we had Magic, Claw, and Thunderbird Feather, which are part of the recipe for the Flambridge. Um, so, let's check that again. Right, check that again. Make a weapon. Um, 
No, it's a flambridge. So we use the magic claw and the thunderbird feather. And for example, you can see that thunderbird feather um, should grant 28 intelligence if I use it to upgrade. Um, if I go to my flambridge, which I have now, you can see that it gives me 28 extra intelligence, which it seems to have gotten from the thunderbird. <clears throat> so these additional components give extra free upgrade effects. Um, what's also really cool is that you can add extra materials to a recipe to have the extra effects added as well. So we're going to make another claymore, just for example. Um, so we're going to also put in one, two, uh, three extra bronzes. Okay. Well, actually, instead of bronzes, let's do something different. Let's use the emeralds that I got. Okay, a very emeraldy longsword. Um, so claymore is now written in blue again. So let's equip the blue claymore. Let's see what it has first of all. So we can see that the blue claymore gives me 15 magic defense. The emeralds I have should give me 5 magic defense each. So if three emeralds work together to give me more magic defense. And if I talk to Barrett with this emeraldy claymore, and ask him to check my gear, check my claymore, he'll say it's been strengthened with nothing yet. But it looks like emerald, emerald, and emerald, so three emeralds were used in making it. So, um, yeah, basically let's go through that again. So, up to three extra effects can be added in a single piece, um, and these effects are all at full strength. Um, and also, the first upgrade of the material will also be at full strength. Um, what that means is if I get this play more, um, get my emerald play more upgraded. Um, Emerald Claymore. When I put in the Emerald, the first one will give me 5 more magic defense for 15 and 20. But every subsequent one after that will still have the diminished defense. So this one will only give me 2 or 3. Get from 20 to 22. Um, the game also prioritizes unnecessary materials. Um, but if I pick from resting materials, if I have extra resting materials, it'll use those as well. Uh, what this means is if I made the Flamberge and I put in an Emerald, it will always pick that Emerald and then it'll pick two other random ones from the recipe. And to see what you used, you can just talk to Barrett, which is what I did. So, um, here is a slightly more complicated diagram. You can see why I introduced it to you early. So basically, we have recipe materials, which are up to five, um, which contribute to the appearance of the base fats. Um, and we also have the extra materials. So the extra materials give extra crafting effects. In this case, the Emerald Longsword gave the extra magic defense, while the Flamberge, the Thunderbird Feather in the Flamberge gave extra intelligence. Um, the intelligence of those, though, came from the recipe materials. Um, I've drawn that in a dotted line. So basically, the recipe materials can get extra crafting effects, but the extra materials prioritize over it. Basically, the recipe materials and your extra materials can both give extra crafting effects if you have more than three materials in them. The upgrade materials are completely unrelated. They also can give upgrade effects, and they're completely different from the crafting effects, even if they do give the same sort of numbers. Uh, next up, part four, uh, level and rarity bonuses. So this is what I said to put a pin on later, uh, put a pin on earlier, and this is something that you might see uh, if you are on the internet a lot about this game and about forging. So level and rarity bonuses are similar um, hidden effects of a piece. So the higher the level and the rarity um, of the materials, so up to 50 materials, 6 crafting, 9 upgrades, um, the better the benefits on the final piece. Um, so basically, every little material we use has its own level. So this, claim, this emerald is level 3. Um, every little emerald we put on has its own level, and they add up. And the total level of those materials give it give an extra bonus. Um, and so these are relatively minor. Um, this is not as good. Uh, this is not that important, especially late game. But early on, it can be pretty useful. So here is the table of the level bonuses. So basically, the level ranges from one to ten for each material, uh, each instance of a material. So that was a level three emerald. Uh, this emerald is level four, for example. Um, and they're visible in the menu. And as you can see here, if the total level of the materials is level 30, um, a weapon will get 10 attack and 5 magic attack, 
whereas on armor we'll get 6 defense and 5 magic defense. Um, if I talk to Barrett about it, he will tell me something, um, like for example, um, it was made with good qual the materials being good quality, or they were all perfect. Um, so what people on the internet say a lot, um, say that you can do with this, is that... Um, so... If I make a long sword, um, for example this claymore, and I get, say, a level 10 iron, and I make everything else in it level 10, so we'll fill it up with uh, clover seeds, I guess. Uh, people normally use turnip seeds because turnip seeds are very cheap, uh, but I don't have any turnip seeds. I uh, probably should have prepped that earlier. Apologies. Okay, cool. So, if I fill it up with turnip seeds, uh, the total level will be 6 times 10, so it'll be 60. So I'll be here on this table, and so the claymore normally had a base attack of 12. Now it'll be 12 plus 25, or it'll be 37. Uh, let's check it as you put that. This one, yep. So I'm gonna say, please check my gear, check my claymore. Um, not to be the decent yet. Clover seeds are reason making this, and a lot of good materials were used in making it. So very good. A lot of good materials means the total level is around 60, and we get 25 more attack. So the claymore's base attack was 12, so our attack should be 37. And as it's here, the attack is 37, and we get 10 more magic attack. Now, uh, if we unequip this, and we keep upgrading it with level 10 clover seeds... Um, yep. Yeah. Upgrade it with level 10 clover seeds. Um, eventually, we'll hit this lost tier, uh, where the total level is 150, if every material is level 10. When we do that, we'll get 700 extra attack, and Barrett will tell us the materials were all perfect. Um, so 700 attack is a lot early game. Uh, the problem is that getting level 10 material, materials uh, really, really easily usually takes a while. And by the time you have this many level 10 materials, uh, you can probably just make equipment with higher level. And overall, uh, when it comes to getting rare materials, uh, it's very hard to get them to be level 10. So usually I ignore level bonuses for the most part. Uh, 700 attack is really, really minor compared to like the tens of thousands you'll get in late game equipment. But yeah, so if I equip that Claymore and I talk to him, um, I asked him about the Claymore, it's reckoned with a lot of Clover Seeds. <laughs> and Clover Seeds were just in making it. Um, but, yeah, incredible, the materials used in making this were all perfect. And we have 700 extra attack, um, which I'll show you now. So we should have 712 attack. But again, uh, this is nice, especially early game, but late game it's not too important. Now, rarity is very similar to level, um, with just slight differences. So rarity ranges from 0 to 15, instead of 1 to 10. Um, and it changes for each type of item. So every piece of silver has the same rarity value and every piece of emerald also has the same rarity value. Um, these are all invisible, so you'll need to check tables online. I'm not gonna, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but as you can see here, the total rarity also gives bonuses. So once you get 200 rarity, you get 2000 attack for a weapon or 1800 magic attack for a staff. Uh, Barrett also says different things about them. So that's what happened with the um, Emerald Claymore. So the Emerald is a rather rare piece of equipment. So it has 22 attack and they got 10 extra attack plus the 12. So if I equip that Claymore again, the Emerald Claymore, and I talk to Barrett, um, right, please check my thing. Um, sorry, this is not, this is the Metal Claymore, but it looks like it was made with some unusual materials attack plus 10, so it has a 22 attack, um, plus the defense we got from the medals we put in. So these numbers are bigger, um, and they are slightly more important. Um, the sort of problem is, though, that um, you can more or less safely ignore it, because a lot of the really, really good upgrade materials already have high rarity, so you're going to be using them anyway. Whereas the good ones that have a low rarity are going to be so good that you're still going to use them, even if the rarity is low. Um, so basically, 
rarity and level bonuses are just extra bonuses that you use if you can, but they aren't that important. Um, so here is the upgraded, updated table. Um, so this is pretty complicated. But basically, everything else, every other material you use, the rest of the materials, the extra materials, and the upgrade materials all contribute to the level and rarity bonus. Um, just assume everything contributes to the level and rarity bonus. So we'll just delete that. Just keep it in the back of your mind. Everything helps the level and rarity bonus. But yeah, so that's level and rarity. Um, I'm gonna pause and make sure the recording is fine. Okay, so with that done, um, we've basically talked about all the things that you can put into the weapon. Uh, the appearance, the base stats, the crafting, the upgrade, and the level and rarity bonus. Um, but there are still a few open questions we might have, and those are this. Um, so question one might be, um, what if we want to make equipment that has a recipe with five materials, but we want to pick all three additional materials? Because remember, um, the recipe might have five materials, which means that we can't put in three extra things, uh, because we can only put six items in one recipe. Uh, so, is there any way we can select all three additional materials? And number two, which is more important to some people, especially myself, is that what if we want our equipment to look cool? What if we want to change our equipment's appearance without changing its specs? Uh, what people might call layered armor from Monster Hunter or transmog from other games. But yes, yeah, so what if we want to transmog something? Uh, these two questions are actually highly related. Um, and number two is easier to answer, so we'll go to that one first. Uh, and modifying an appearance of some equipment is actually super, super easy. Um, to make um, make some first uh, equipment, A, look like the second one, you just use the first equipment and the recipe of the second one. So that's super, super easy. Um, sounds more complicated than it is. Uh, let's go craft something for a second. Uh, let's say we want to make our... Let's say that this male looks cool, because it's blue. Uh, let's say we want our scale vest to look like a male. Uh, all you need to do is you want to make a scale vest. So you can see that the scale vest has 68 defense. And the male has 36 defense. So we're going to make a male. We're going to put a scale vest in it. And we're going to be able to create a male uh, with the stats of a scale vest. Uh, let's put that now. So here, we have 68 defense. We have the stats of a scale vest and it looks like a male. Uh, let's talk to Barrett. Hey Barrett, uh, please check my mail. <laughs> um, <laughs> nothing's been used on it yet, but it looks like mail but has the abilities of a scale vest. So yeah, um, we've made our scale vest look like a mail, and that was super super easy. Um, so just some extra details on that. So any upgrade you use will be erased. So if we upgraded the scale vest, the male will have the stats of the initial scale vest. Um, but these are the really interesting stuff. So the extra materials in the old piece can be considered as extra materials in the new piece. Um, so what this means is that if I do that again, uh, let's change it up a bit. Um, let's say we want to make our um, chain mail. Let's say we want to make our vest to look like a shirt. Um, so if we're going to put our extra bronzes in our vest, um, those extra bronzes are going to be passed on onto the shirt. So if we make a shirt and we put in that extra vest, um, and we equip that shirt, and we talk to Barrett. Hey Barrett, do you like my shirt? Um, it will say that the shirt hasn't been checked yet. Um, the three bronzes that we use in the vest are now in the shirt, um, and it still has the abilities on the vest. So extra materials in the old piece are passed on onto the new piece. Um, also, because those materials aren't actually used in the crafting, uh, they don't contribute to the level of rarity. Um, so yeah. And finally, if you do this multiple times, the appearance of the last piece used um, will be considered. So remember that, for example. Um, so let's make another armor. Let's make a cotton cloth. So this male had the stats of a chain vest, but if we use the chain vest stat of male, 
to make a cotton cloth. The cotton cloth will have the stats of the appearance of the last item, which was a male. So if the cotton cloth will have the stats of a male. Yep, so it just uses the last item used. So it ignored everything before that point. Um, but it'll still pass on the extra materials. So here is the final diagram, the most complicated one. So we'll take a few seconds here. Basically, we have the extra materials, which is still used for the crafting effects, but also you can use some additional equipment, which is a type of extra material, and the additional equipment gives base stats to the new uh, equipment. If it's there. Uh, if it's not there, we'll take the base stats of the recipe, but if it is there, we'll take the base stats of the additional equipment. Also, extra materials in the additional equipment can be passed on as crafting effects, while the extra materials can also be used. Um, basically, the extra material, the crafting effects are drawn from the extra materials that are there already, and the extra materials in the old equipment, um, and can also be drawn from the recipe as well, whereas the base stats are taken from the additional equipment. This entire time, upgrade materials are doing their own thing, and all of these light yellow ones contribute to the rarity and level, um, but the extra materials of the additional equipment do not. Uh, this one doesn't do anything for the rarity and level, so I made it darker just to distinguish it. Uh, but yeah, so that is basically how you change in a piece of equipment's appearance. This leads us to part 7. Um, then, from that, how do we control the appearance of all, how do we control all extra materials if we want to craft an item? Um, basically, um, by putting those extra materials in the old equipment, we can pass it onto the final equipment. So that way we can pass all the materials onto a final equipment by basically using some sacrificial equipment. Um, we'll explain that with an example here. And my example will be to make a magic shield with more resistances. Um, so, here we go. Okay. So let's make a shield. Let's get the shields and let's look at the magic shield. This one. So the magic shield gives a hundred seal res, which is really, really nice. But what if we don't just want seal res? What if we want like paralyze res or sleep res? Um, so we have these cursed dolls. Uh, cursed dolls grant us uh, paralyze res and drain resistance. If we want to use all three of them, uh, we can't hit them, as you can see. We only have space for two of them. So, what do we do? Well, basically, um, what we want to do is we want to create one sacrificial piece. So we're going to make like any old material we want. Um, we're going to put on those cursor dolls on them, like we did before. And now we have small shields that have extra cursor dolls and thus have very high um, paralyze and drain resistance. So here it is. As you can see, 45% seal and paralyze resistance and 60% drain resistance. Now, we can pass those cursor dolls on onto the magic shield uh, by making a magic shield with that small shield in the recipe. And if we look at that, uh, it was in blue of course, um, the magic shield now has 45 power resistance and speed train res and 45% seal res. So that's a bit weird, that's a bit annoying because we wanted a magic shield that already had 100% seal res but it seems to have lost it. So um, basically all we did until now is we just made a magic shield um, with the stats of a small shield. Uh, we can talk to Barrett to confirm that. Um, Barrett, check my gear, check my magic shield. And it'll say that it has three cursed dolls and that it um, has the abilities of a small shield. Now to make a magic shield that looks like a magic shield, um, though, all we need to do then, as you might be able to guess, is you um, make a shield, um, make a new magic shield, and we use that old magic shield in the recipe. So this way, we're making a magic shield with the stats of a magic shield, because a magic shield is in the recipe, 
but it also passes on those equipment, um, those additional materials we use, so those cursor dolls. So we're going to make that. Um, and as you can see, we're going to have a magic shield with 100% seal race and 45% paralyzed and 50% training race. We're going to talk to Barrett and he's going to tell us that in our gear, we have three cursor dolls for all the resistances. And it looks like a magic shield and has the abilities of a magic shield. Thank you, Barrett. Thank you very much. But yeah, so that way we're able to just sacrifice our small shield and make two magic shields to create a magic shield with the extra materials that we wanted. Um, so to do that, we're just going to do one final example at the end of all. Um, so with following our very simple recipe that we just talked about right now. So basically, to create whatever we want, we need to think about the materials we want to put into it, the stats we want, and the final appearance. So let's say we want to make a cool looking status longsword. Um, so my example for this is... Um, okay, so I have these materials in my hand, and Brogyo's thorns, which give me 10% sleep attack. So I want to create a longsword um, which has some cool statuses um, with those Ambrosias. And one example could be uh, this longsword, um, the Psycho, which gives 30% Paralyze attack, Fatigue attack, and Sick attack, but no Sleep attack. And of course we have the issue before, we can't just stick Ambrosias in because we have no space. So following this recipe, what do we want to do first? We want to create any equipment with the desired materials. So I'm going to create a claymore with those desired materials, those three ambrosia's points. Now, we're going to use that thing we made at step one um, to create the material, the weapon with the right stats. So the weapon of the stats we want is going to be the psycho. I'm going to put in that claymore with the sweep attack. Um, so now we have a um, Psycho with the stats of a Claymore, but with the extra sleep attack. Now, uh, what we can do is we can upgrade that thing um, up to level 10. So let me show it up right now. So we have the Psycho with the stats of a Claymore. And we can upgrade this if we want to level 10. That way we can increase the total level of our setup. Um, that'll take too long, so I'm not going to be bothered to do that. But basically, this will increase our total level bonus. But then we're going to use that uh, in step 4 to craft the weapon with the right appearance. Uh, so what weapon looks cool uh, that we can make? Nope, 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 nope. Oh, a cyclone blade is cool. Okay. So we'll get the cyclone blade and we'll put on the psycho into it. And now, the cyclone should have the stats of a psycho blade and should have the extra sleep attack from the Ambrosia's Thorns. Uh, let's look at it. Yep, yeah, so we have 30% sleep attack from Ambrosia's Thorns and all the other status effects from everything else. Uh, let's talk to Barret. Talk. Check my gear. Check my cyclone blade. And yep, yeah, three Ambrosia's Thorns. We're used for making this. And uh, it looks like a cyclone blade that has the abilities of a psycho. Uh, if we want, we can upgrade it with another one for upgrade it with another Ambrosia's Thorns. Uh, but just a quick demo. Here's my area. Here's my area weapon. And as you can see, Paralyze, Fatigue. Um, one of them should make him go to sleep. Yeah. So that orc went to sleep before he died. Ouch. Uh, but yeah. So that way we can create our cool looking status sword. And yes. Um, part 9. Some just quick random RP tips. Um, so fortune crafting failed if the RP cost is higher than your max RP. So you can see the RP cost. Uh, so this cotton cloth cost 24 RP. I have 2,779 as my max RP, so I will succeed. You can increase your max RP just by playing the game. Um, you can decrease the cost of crafting by boosting your skill. But also you can increase your max RP with food, uh, particularly um, relaxed tea. So if I go to my pot, um, there's this item called Folax T, which increases my RP max by 250 plus 25%, um, which is very nice. Uh, but we need, so we need Leak 
and pig melon, which we can grow, and winter, I believe, honey, which you can get from bees in your farm, and relaxed tea leaves, which you need to make at the um, cooking table. Um, I don't think you can generally buy, um, but yes. So we're gonna make some relaxed tea leaves. We're going to um, use those in our pot to make some relaxed tea. Uh, you can increase the level of our relaxed tea even further by using high level ingredients. So I'm gonna put on, say, some, we have high level milk. So milk, tea. <laughs> Do we have to have your cup of <laughs> But yeah, so the relaxed tea is now level um, seven. And it gives us a whole bunch of RP and max RP. So if we drink that, we go from 2,779 to 4,694, which is a lot. So I could be able to craft things that are harder. Um, the other interesting thing is that, um, so if we run out of RP, um, let me just burn some RP quickly. Um, these ways in my farm. Um, oh, I left my, put my pot away. Let me just quickly grab my pot. Go look, my room is messy. Okay. Uh, let me just burn my RP. So, so, that's fine. so when I make something which has too much RP, uh, more RP than I have, so let's make this lamellar vest for now. Um, so I have 68 RP, uh, but this will cost 100 RP, so this will still succeed. Um, what'll just happen is it'll use the rest of my RP, and I'll lose 25% of my health, which is fine. I succeed. Um, to be able to craft as many items as you want, like in a row, the best thing you can do, um, the easiest thing you can do is you can go to your medicine and make an item called a formulate. Uh, if I can find it, there we are. Formulate. Um, so formulates, formulate, so formulate decreases your max HP. So what a high level formulate will do, um, I'm gonna increase the level of my formulate by putting in some milk again, I guess. Um, so what the formula will do is it'll decrease my max HP. Um, where is it? Yep. Up to uh, one, and I'll lose twenty-five percent of one HP each time. So I'll lose one HP, which means I can basically craft forever um, because I'm never going to go all the way down to zero health if I lose one HP every time. Well, I will, it'll just, you know, take way too long. But yeah, so that's just some quick tips for crafting with regards to RP. Um, so yeah, and with that, I think that's the end of the video. Uh, that is video one complete of the series. Um, so in summary, you can create any equipment you want just by basically making anything with the desired materials. Um, using that to craft a material with the right stats, um, upgrade that to level 10 if you want, and use that to create an item with the right appearance, and then upgrade that however you want. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Um, let me know in the comments what your favorite weapons you've made are. Um, and your homework, I guess, is to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and keep posting for the next video. Thank you for watching.